Hey everyone, this is Matt Perez with SolidBox, and today I wanna to talk about constraining your power surfacing power bodies to existing SolidWorks geometry. Now we've done a few videos, you've seen the, the collateral that power surfacing has to show you how to use their tools, how to import reference geometry, how to constrain to an edge and a ver vertex and a face. But we all have different design challenges. We're all starting at different points, and we need to figure out how to make these tools work for us. So what I wanna do is talk a little bit about the SolidWorks side of things and get into creating a power body, but we need to do a few things to prep our models before we get into power surfacing. The first thing I wanna talk about is the actual base geometry. Now, in this case, I have two surfaces, and the end goal is to create a power body that extends from this surface up to this surface. That way, if we modify any of our original geometry, change the dimensions, whatever the case might be, we can very easily update our model. But we need to consider how the things are gonna interact, how the power body is gonna interact with our SOLIDWORKS surfaces. And as we look at this, you'll notice that they're extruded all the way up from what is our top plane. Now, it's always a good idea when you start modeling, if you can, to use the mid plane option to, to start creating your geometry so that it's symmetric about your standard planes. It makes things much easier down the road and we'll get into that in just a little bit and you'll see how it really helps us. The next thing we need to talk about is the actual imported references. When you start a power body and you actually go to import your references using this drop down here, what you'll find is that you need to select a face. Now this is great, especially if you need to bring in an entire face and use its entirety, use all of its edges, all of its vertices uh, and the entire face. But that's not always the case. Sometimes we need to actually focus in on a certain area. And we know that with power surfacing, once we import that entire face, we really have no way to accurately align it with a certain geometry in our coordinate system. So what we wanna do is think about different ways that we can approach this from the SOLIDWORKS side before we get into power surfacing. Now, I should say in power surfacing, we do have alignment options. We can align with certain axes, X, Y, and Z. We can also push it into planes and things of that nature. But if you're dealing with obscure geometry, if you're dealing with stuff that's not necessarily aligned to the origin, it gets a little bit more complicated. So having some of these tools in your tool set will really help you figure out how you can get this geometry. So the first thing I wanna do is start a sketch on my front plane. Now, on my front plane, you'll notice that my origin is centered about the part. So now we can go ahead and do things like draw a circle and dimension it at the origin. In this case, I'm gonna say one inch. And then we can go to either our features or our surface tab, go to our curves dropdown and create a split line. We're gonna project this onto our back surface. Now, when we do that, we still have two surfaces. We have a split extrude, uh, or a surface extrude and a split line surface. Now, while this back is still a single surface, when we get into power surfacing, we're only gonna be selecting a face. Now this is divided up so that we have a face reference to where we can actually select the smaller face and constrain our power body to that. So this definitely helps things and helps you accurately locate your geometry. That means if you ever come back to your sketch and you modify this and move it, then your power body, once you update those references, is gonna move with that as well. The next thing we need to do is work on actually having vertices that we can select. So what I wanna do is go again to my curves dropdown, again to split line, but this time I'm gonna use intersection. I'm gonna grab my top plane and I want to intersect with both of these faces. Now what this is doing is it's, again, we still have a single surface here and a single surface here, but now we've divided it up into three faces on this back surface and two faces on the front surface. We can also do the same process with the right plane. And again, we'll do a split line, we'll do an intersection, and we'll split all of these faces up. Now one thing you'll notice I didn't do was I didn't split the inside of this circular division here. And I did that for a good reason because I want this to be a single face selection. On the other hand, what I'd like to do now is note that I have a vertex at the center of these four quadrants. This will allow me to actually constrain to a vertex rather than just an edge or a face. Again, accurately locating my power body in 3D space using these references that I've created in SOLIDWORKS. So now that we've gone down this path and we've divided our faces up just a little bit, we want to go ahead and start creating a power body. So we go to our power surfacing tab, and in this case, let's create a box. Now instantly we'll note that the box is a little too big, so we're just gonna change its size down to one. 
You'll also notice that we can use that mid plane option and this will automatically select our mid plane from our top. So now our power body is accurately located. Of course, we're gonna have to move things around, but that's something that we can easily do. The first thing you wanna do is move it as close as possible to where you wanna constrain it. The next thing I wanna do is select this back face and delete it. And this gives me a surface rather than a solid primitive. And you'll notice that with this surface, I now have some options or I now have an open edge where I can constrain it to an imported reference. We have to be real careful here and we really have to think about the model. So I'm gonna switch over to actually view my sub D mesh and note that I have vertices and I have edges and I have faces of course, but I don't necessarily have the geometry I need in order to constrain to my SOLIDWORKS model. So what I wanna do is think about dividing this up. So I'm gonna double click on my lines. In this case, I'll double click on these lines and I'll insert loops. Now, when I do that, you'll notice that I insert a single loop and it's completely in the middle of my section. So we'll go ahead and say, okay. And then we'll follow the same process with these edges. I'm gonna insert a loop and say, okay. Now, again, we have an open edge on the back, but we have vertices that we can do things like constrain to these references. So now I wanna import a reference. And to start with, I'm only gonna import a single reference, a single face. Now, once I have this, I can change my mode to a loop selection, select this loop, and I can constrain it to an edge. Now this automatically pushes it onto the edge here, but we have to be real careful because what we're doing is we're actually creating a, a reference here. We're creating a reference that is tangent to the face. Now this is okay and this might be what we want, but as we look at our geometry, that doesn't necessarily produce the results we want. So I'm gonna take this front face and I'm gonna scale it in 3D until my geometry flips around how I would expect. So now I have a nice tangent relation here and you can see that everything has actually worked out pretty well in terms of my geometry. That's not to say that it's actually fixed or constrained, but I can come back and I can do things like constrain it to a vertex. But one thing you'll see is that it automatically flipped down to the bottom. And the reason that did is because I didn't split up this inside face. I only split up the external faces. So in certain cases, it could be very helpful to split up the internal edges or the internal faces. In other cases, you might wanna leave it as an un, undivided face. In this case, it would have been a good idea to split these edges up, but for the purposes of our video, you can now see the difference between the two. The next thing we need to do is constrain this edge. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and grab all these faces, move them very close to where I want them to be, select this endpoint, and that's what I wanna to constrain to the edge here, but I need to bring in another reference. So we'll go to import reference, and in this case, I don't actually have to bring in all four faces, I only need to bring in an individual face because that will allow me to constrain this point to a vertex. So now this point is accurately located in the middle of the surface, which is directly in line with our coordinate system origin. So that means that I can make any changes to the surrounding geometry. I can push, pull, I can move things around as needed and have them update whenever, whenever I want to. Now it's always a good idea, especially when you're dealing with symmetry in cases like this, that you use your global scaling options or global move options, that you don't get too crazy when you're moving geometry around but we have a pretty good reference model here. We can go ahead and say okay and create this inside of SOLIDWORKS by converting it to a NURBS. Now, as we look at this, it's accurately constrained to my SOLIDWORKS geometry, but what happens if we change our geometry? So we can go back to our original sketch and let's go ahead and let's change this back one to a three inch. Now, obviously that is a big change in geometry. It's a big jump. All we need to do is go back to our power body, edit, go to our import reference dropdown and update constraints. So it leaves the rest of our vertices alone and it only pulls the edge that's constrained to those references back to where they need to be. Now we can do things like, of course, insert some more loops. If you wanna control the shape of your geometry a little bit better, we can scale these things up or down, move them in or out, and really have a pretty drastic effect on the geometry. Let's go ahead and add another loop in here and let's scale this one up just a bit. And then we'll take all of these edges and we'll push them forward. Say okay. 
So again, this is a real great way to use the tools inside of SOLIDWORKS to do things like split faces or even use Scribe uh, to, to determine sections of a face that you really want to focus on. And again, this doesn't have any effect on the surrounding geometry. It doesn't convert it to its own surface. All it really does is divides the surface up so you can make more usable uh, imported references out of it for power surfacing. If you guys have any questions, please let me know, matt at mysolidbox.com, and thanks for watching.